Hello folks, welcome. It's a Saturday afternoon and I'm here outside and I'm just knocking off a few tea bowls. Just weighing up here some clay. I weigh up my tea bowls for about 14 ounces. So I mean, tea bowls you can make different sizes, they haven't got to be any particular size. But I go for about 14. There we are, I've got three lumps there, I'll weigh up some more. Let's go down to the wheel head. I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, yeah, as you can see, I've got a couple there on the end of the bench. We'll start here and then we'll come in for a bit of detail. So, yeah, my goodness, we've had a lot of rain here just these last days. It's been, oof. My tent here above me is ripped with the, the weight of water that that came down one afternoon. So, yeah, I'm working on my treadle wheel. Nice and slow. Sometimes in life we have to find ways to slow down, don't we? Not speed up. I can hear some machinery over there somewhere in the distance. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Just bringing the clay up nice and slow, letting it grow. Filling out the form. Ooh, the sunshine has come. So many different ways that you can treat tea bowls. One of the nice things about a tea bowl is it's it's sort of loose character. And um, today I've I've mixed up some some of the same clay body, but rather thick, in the form of a in the form of a slip which I'm going to squirt or not squirt but just put on the outside of the of the tea bowl like that and then I'm going to take my my rib I'm just going to like move the rib down the outside of the tea bowl with that soft the soft slip I don't want to get it too watery otherwise it, it you don't get the effect. You just loosely move the rib over the outside of the 
and it creates a it creates a pattern in 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 the slip you see which of course will when it dries will remain and that pattern can be anything that you want it to be really I like a sort of fairly randomness and this allows the the glaze in the firing it allows the glaze to pool in certain places and run over in others so you get a effect as it were so I kind of play around with it until I feel happy with the the pattern that I'm getting I don't think I put this, use my stick on that one. <laughs> Forgot to stick it. Never mind. Let's bring the camera in, you can see what I'm trying to do. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can get the zoom in there a bit. Okay. There we are up close. So, so first of all you want a nice slow, nice slow wheel speed you see. I'm going to breathe some character into the clay. Sometimes with T-balls I like to just take the lip here, just let it come out a touch. It makes it a better, more inviting experience for your lips when you're drinking. Okay, so you can see I've just thrown a T-ball there, just let it let it grow. I'm taking my bottle of A thick clay slip. Okay, and I'm, you see what I'm doing? Now what I've got to do is play with it. This is like this is like mud pies on the move, isn't it? Take the stick.
little leather there. And there it is. So you want to get a nice sort of loose casual feel to it. And these of course are going to be going to be trimmed. Let's do one more. Beautiful sunshine. You can make pots better when the sun is shining. Thing is about tea bowls, you want to be relaxed when you're making them. If you're tense, you're not going to be able to make relaxed tea bowls, are you? So best not to try if you're feeling a bit tense. It's a case of experimenting a bit, doing what you this is where you you kind of need a wheel that is sympathetic to the to the process a little bit. Nice thing with this wheel, I can slow it, you see, and speed it. There's lots of ways and methods and things of treating this clay. You know, I don't need to tell you, you know, you're already thinking to yourself, oh, I've, you know, I'll comb it. You could comb it, you could. I'm sort of going for like a rather wavy, random. treatment sort of with lines crisscrossing over overlapping now you could for example maybe if you wanted to, to establish a sort of clean area and then have a allow a line there to form you see You've got to learn, learn to play with the slip a bit on the surface just to, you can get a wavy line by going like that you see a bit. Sometimes it's better not to overwork it. I've been kind of overworking this a bit because I'm sort of like talking and trying to describe different different 
processes. You might think it looks messy. Well, at this stage it does in a way. I know what you mean. But you have to... You have to... You have to see what it's like when it comes out of the kiln. No. Okay, well, we'll leave it at that with this one. So, taking my stick. These are going to be trimmed, so we're not involved in any um, too much use of the stick. There it is. Let's bring back the camera. Anyway. I encourage you have a go at doing it get some slip get some of your clay that's nice and wet and put it put it through a put it through a sieve and get it into some sort of squeezy bottle like this a slip trailer or one of these kind of bottles with a top but it does need to be fairly you see what I mean it's not runny, okay? It's really nice. <laughs> okay. Hey, visit my website, simonleachpottery.com and yeah. Yeah, we got tools there and bits and pieces. Join us for a workshop. If we don't have any workshops, well, don't let that put you off. Inquire because things can happen suddenly. <laughs> anyway, that'll do for now. Okay, keep practicing. See you soon. Bye bye.